I've made all kinds of mistakes and there are things that I regret about this process or at very least things that I would do differently knowing what I now know today and that's perfectly okay. The most important thing is that you're finding ways to move your startup forward. Hey, it's Rick Kettner here, and welcome back to the Startup Vlog. This is episode number 10, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about my biggest startup regrets as it relates to the venture that I'm currently working on. And if you've been following along with this series, you know the very first product that I'm building for my startup is a book where I explain how to raise kids to be more confident in an unpredictable world, in a future in which there are all kinds of changes to the economy, emerging technology, artificial intelligence, automation, other things like this that make it more difficult for parents to understand how to raise their kids to be successful in this changing environment. And so the first product is a book, and I've been following the formula outlined in Write Useful Books by Rob Fitzpatrick. So for this 10th episode, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to kind of recap the journey thus far, talk about how I've been spending my time, some thoughts and reflections on how I've been spending my time, and things that I wish I did differently. Now, this is different than some of the other episodes in which I've tried to kind of have a key theme or a key takeaway in each one of those episodes. For this episode, it's much more of just an update and a, just a discussion about how I've been spending my time. So let's start at the beginning. How have I been spending my time? Well, at the very beginning, and I've hinted at some of these things throughout this series, but I'll give you this high-level recap, I guess you could say. At the very beginning, I started with early customer conversations. So I da sat down with people that I thought might be potential customers or at least would represent potential customers and I sought to gain additional information about how they view the problem that I'm aiming to solve, how they describe the challenge, their thoughts, their concerns, and also picking up on the language specifically that they use when talking about these things because that tends to be very helpful not only when it comes to marketing, but being as I'm creating an actual book that is made up of words, it of course helps to speak the language of potential customers and using their words and their lingo when it comes to actually tackling the challenge itself. So that beginning phase was simply about gathering as much information as I can and starting to validate the idea itself, seeing if people are genuinely interested in this problem and if it's something they care enough about to potentially read a book and also just to find out are these people readers? So that was the initial focus, just getting information. From there, I took the advice from Write Useful Books by Rob Fitzpatrick to start by focusing on the table of contents. And this is a very powerful way to start to define the scope of a product, in this case, of a book. So outline the table of contents, play around with different potential orderings, and I tried a bunch of different variations to kind of think about how would I lay out these core principles? How could I structure them in a way where one idea kind of builds on the next and then another builds on that rather than just having disconnected ideas or perhaps presenting certain ideas too early without first laying a foundation? So I focused on that. I went through several iterations. I got my table of contents to a place where I finally felt really confident with how the ideas would unfold. And then again, based on Rob Fitzpatrick's advice, I focused on adding notes and more information. So I started to fill in some of the details. And one kind of useful tool for those that might be creating a book or a useful idea is rather than focusing on kind of catchy or intriguing uh, subtitles or section titles, just speak in plain language, just making it very clear, especially from an author perspective. You can always swap this out later, but from the author's perspective, to get a firm understanding for myself what it is that I'm covering in each chapter. And then, like I said, I started to fill in details, added notes, added references, perhaps even pre-wrote certain paragraphs where I really wanted to make sure I'm covering a specific idea in a certain way, and just started to kind of fill in the details. And that took you know, a couple of weeks to really get clear and there was some rearranging, some adjusting of the table of contents throughout that part of the process. And then kind of the final step, or not the final, but the, the last step in terms of what I've done thus far was getting into writing a complete first draft. So taking that table of contents, taking my notes and converting that into a complete first draft. And I'm about 70% through that process where I'm not just kind of outlining what I want to say, I'm turning it into 
full-blown paragraphs with subheadings and structure. It's far from complete. There is a lot. There are a lot of things that I plan to change, and I'm still going to be gathering additional feedback from beta readers who will get early access to the book. But at this stage, it's about taking the ideas and actually converting them into a readable piece of content. And so there are already lots of things that I would like to go back and change because every new chapter I complete kind of has me rethinking the way that I've described content in previous chapters. So there's already this tendency and this desire to go back and kind of improve the sections that have already been written. But I'm just trying to, at this point, just keep moving forward, get finished the first draft, and then, as I mentioned, get it into the hands of beta readers where I expect the most amount of feedback and ideas for adjustments and improvements will take place. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I feel like I'm about three to five weeks away from having a complete first draft, uh, but that's still a work in progress, so it's hard to say for certain. Now, in terms of thoughts and reflections and looking back over this journey, one thing that's really stood out to me is that this drafting process is a very long period of time with very little feedback. So it is useful, it's nice to kind of take the time to just put together a version of the book that can be consumed by readers where I can start to gather additional feedback. But one thing that's really jumped out to me is this is a long period of time where I'm taking a bit of a gamble. You know, I had those early customer conversations, but the scope has adjusted slightly. As I write every chapter, I'm starting to steer the book in a slightly different direction. So that's beginning to be something that I'm thinking about. And kind of psychologically, I'm starting to feel a little bit of stress as a result of that, because on the one hand, I want to just keep the momentum going. I'm spending 90 minutes every single day writing and making forward momentum, and that takes a certain amount of energy to maintain and to just stay consistent. Seven days a week, every single morning, I'm writing, and I don't wanna break that up. And at the same time, it does feel like I'm going longer and longer and longer without gathering feedback. So there's this weird dichotomy where on the one hand, it feels like I should probably stop and get this first 70% into the hands of potential readers and start to gather feedback. But then on the other hand, it feels like I should just complete what I've started. There's some kind of sunk cost bias going on where it feels like at this point, I might as well finish the remaining 30% have a more complete product that I can get into the hands of beta readers and gather more complete feedback. But there is kind of a, a give and take there where I'm feeling this growing sense of urgency to gather feedback and at the same time, I don't wanna get stuck kind of coming to a grinding halt and potentially uh, having the entire kind of train derailed where I just lose momentum, lose motivation and have a harder time getting things back up and running. So that's kind of in the back of my mind. And well, I still feel fairly confident about the book and the ideas itself. There is this growing level of stress where I'm just thinking, you know, this is a long, a long period of time where I'm not getting feedback and I might feel good about the product, but at the end of the day, I'm not the customer. So that's kind of a recurring theme where often as I'm writing, I'm thinking, man, it would be nice to have some feedback, some further validation throughout this process. So with all of that said, kind of switching gears to what I wish I did differently, the number one thing that I wish I did differently, and I've mentioned this throughout this series, but I've kind of always downplayed it, knowing what I now know, what I would do differently is a lot more writing in public. So using a platform like Medium or another one of these kind of open writing platforms, I would take some of the principles from the book and even though it might take a little bit of additional work to kind of package them up as an individual article or something like that, I think there would be a lot of value in doing that, in kind of converting the idea from being part of a greater whole into an individual piece of content that I could publish on Medium, get people's thoughts, get people's feedback, perhaps most important of all, get people's questions and get a sense for what I might not be mentioning or the things I, kinds of things that I might be taking for granted that people already understand or already appreciate when they might not. You know, it's hard to say whether or not that would or wouldn't make a difference, but from just a confident standpoint and feeling like there's a less chance that I'm wasting my time or getting lost in the weeds of something that people may not care about, by simply publishing in public, you have that added benefit of seeing how people react to the content as you're piecing it together, as opposed to what I'm doing, which is putting all this time and effort in 
only to perhaps later find out that I've missed the mark in some important ways. And while I fully expect to be doing some major rewriting, perhaps it would be more efficient if I was doing some of the initial writing in public. So that's kind of thing number one. Another thing that has come up, and this is something that Rob Fitzpatrick has mentioned in an online discussion community, is that another really powerful option is to write a shorter condensed version of the book, like a six pager, just a very compact version where you still outline all of the ideas kind of together as a collective thought or a collective uh, message as opposed to breaking it up into chunks that might not entirely make sense when separated from the entire theme. You could just make a very condensed, almost like a long essay or something like that, that goes through the core principles of the book in a very short and summarized way. Much like many of my book summaries where you just take the core things, the things that matter most and relay those ideas in an effort to not necessarily replace the book because Generally, as I talk about often here on the channel, books are so much better than summaries for providing the nuance and the examples and the, the details that really matter when it comes to executing things, but a summary can still convey the high-level ideas and allow you to start to gather feedback. So that's kind of another approach I could have taken. Now, it's also worth mentioning, at this point, I still fully have the option to just bring things to a stop, take the 70% that I've already completed, get that in the hands of beta readers, see how they react. Odds are most of the feedback is gonna be in the first 25% of the book where people either do or don't buy into the message. So many books out there, when they ultimately fail, it's because people couldn't even really get into them. They don't complete the content. So there is an argument at least for taking what I've already written, getting it into the hands of beta readers and just seeing what they think of the beginning half, even if it is a work in progress, even if the complete message isn't done. So that's another thing that I'm thinking about actively right now. Having said that, where I've settled currently is that I'd much rather just keep the momentum going. I can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel, even though I'm fully aware that I will almost certainly make be making a lot of changes to the content after I start to gather feedback from beta readers. There is this kind of self-awareness around if, if I kind of bring this project to a halt, I might not be able to get the momentum really going again, or at least it would be much more difficult, and that might actually prolong the process of getting a complete first draft where I can start to gather feedback. And even as the feedback is coming in, I plan to go back and start making some of the edits that I already know that I want to make, almost regardless of feedback. Although, of course, if people are very happy with certain sections, then I may just leave them. But... I fully expect there to be a lot of room for iterations and improvement. And so that's kind of the process moving forward. Now, I think the main takeaway here is that there is no perfect process when it comes to building a startup or building a product or a service or anything like that. You will make mistakes, you will have regrets. I've made all kinds of mistakes and there are things that I regret about this process or at very least things that I would do differently knowing what I now know today, and that's perfectly okay. The most important thing is that you're finding ways to move your startup forward, and you're striking a balance between two very important things. Number one, making progress on the product itself and continuing to move that forward, and looking for opportunities to gather ongoing feedback and information from potential customers. And so long as you're not getting caught in either one, where you're just focusing on, for example, the product, or you're just focused on endlessly collecting feedback and endlessly gathering more research and information and never really making progress on the product. So, so long as you find a balance between these two ideas, you're making real progress, continuing to build something, and at the same time, you're seeking useful feedback along the way. Well, if you can find a reasonable balance between these two things, you're going to make steady progress over time and eventually finish your product or your service in a way that is likely to succeed. But anyway, that's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we covered here or anything that you would like to see covered in a future episode, including things we haven't yet addressed in this series or perhaps things that you wish we covered in more detail throughout this series, let me know down in the comment section. And of course, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future episode.